Imagine being able to create stunning 3D art using just a few words. Well, it's slowly becoming a reality thanks to AI. And today we're looking at GPT-4 and this handy add-on for Blender. This powerful tool lets you control Blender using just natural language. So you type in a few words, you hit execute, and you basically get whatever you were asking for. So join me as we dive into the world of GPT-4 and Blender. And if you like what you see, uh, maybe give the video a like. And you can also subscribe to stay tuned on future videos. Uh, now, before we can do anything, we of course have to install the add-on, uh, the link of which I've put in the description. After you've downloaded the add-on, you just go to a Blender file, go up to Edit, then click Preferences, uh, go to the Add-ons menu, which is over here. Uh, then you click Install, and you find the add-on that you've just downloaded. I've downloaded it here, uh, so I'm going to open it, Install Add-on, uh, and then you just click this check mark. This is how most add-ons are activated in Blender, but it actually requires an extra step. Now in my viewport, I'm gonna press N to get this side menu over here. I'm gonna click on this new menu, which is the GPC4 assistant menu. So you can already see the interface here and a window where you can give a prompt. Uh, but if we do that, let's do that right now. Create a sphere uh, and execute it. You will see that there is an error. It says no API key detected. So to get your API key, you can go to this page, which you can access when downloading the add-on. Uh, and let's scroll down uh, and then here at step five, uh, to get your API key, go to this page. So let's click this. Brings us over to the platform.openai's website uh, and you're just gonna create a new secret key. Let's just go ahead and copy that and we need to paste it in the add-on preferences menu. So uh, let's go back to Blender again, go to edit preferences and add-ons and let's open it up here. And here we have a window where we can just paste our API key just like that. Now let's close it down and see if it works. Wow, okay, so it's actually created a sphere uh, even though I had a spelling mistake, which is already cool. Uh, but obviously we can create the sphere very easily. Well, let's see what it actually can do. So let's make a more complex prompt. Uh, and the first thing you wanna keep in mind when writing your prompt is make it as specific as possible in the context of Blender. So what I mean with that is specify things like the size of the object, where you want it to be generated, or how many objects you want, or do you want it randomly or not randomly. If you give more information about the things you know you want in your object, you will get a better response. So let's create a rigid body sim with 10 one by one by one cubes stacked as a tower that falls down onto a 20 by 20 plane. Let's try it out. Okay, so let's do it. So Blender is working. It's now loading. Okay, we actually have something. The cubes appear to intersect each other, uh, but let's see if it actually works. They might actually explode outwards because they intersect. Yep. <laughs> hey, but hey, uh, it actually got pretty close. Uh, let's ask, uh, let's actually pull up our code because we can do that. We can click show code. And yeah, we just scroll up here. We can see the code that was just generated. So the only thing it got wrong was making the cube one unit thick, basically. So I tried to resize it with a factor of one, but when it's already two, it will just remain two. Uh, and we can fix that by going over here and changing it to 0.5, uh, or it can just scale them down as well. But uh, I'm just gonna change the code. Uh, and let's execute this by pressing the play button. Huh, interesting. Oh, actually it's creating nine more cubes and then from bottom to top. Yeah, I, I see what's going on. Uh, this needs to be 0.5 as well. Okay, let's try that out. There goes my light, but it did work. <laughs> so yeah, it does work. Let's press play. And yeah, lovely. You can see the tower falling over. Nice. You could also use GPT-4 iteratively. So we could say create 10 spheres and distribute them randomly. Let's say within 10 meters of the spawn point. Uh, and execute that, we got 10 spheres with a random distribution. So now we can make a follow-up prompt, like scaling them down randomly. 
And we can just type it like this without extra context, click execute, and it will just add to the script that we had. So it created 10 more spheres. So let's just get rid of them and show the code that we just had. Uh, so yeah, here it's creating these spheres and then we added some code here to scale them randomly between 0.1 and 2. And if we just execute it, we get this. And the next thing we could do is now make 80% uh, of them green and 20% red. Let's try that. All right, so it seems like we got an error. Uh, sequences of zero should contain four items. Okay, so it's trying to give it an RGB value, but it actually needs to give it an RGBA value, so the alpha as well. So here we see three numbers, but it actually needs four. So yeah, that's a common error that it seems to still make. I had it in the last video too, but no problem. Let's just add another value here. So 0.0, .0. Uh, let's do that here as well. So now that we've done that, let's execute it and see what happens. And yeah, it seems like about 80% of these spheres got turned red. Now, what if I want to create like 50 spheres? Well, luckily, we have some very good documentation that the AI created alongside the code. So here you can see define the number of spheres to create. And I can just up this to something like 50. Let's try that out. Hopefully we'll see more red. Here we go. I've already created two other videos about creating prompts that get you stuff in Blender, so I won't go too deep into that. But I do want to talk a bit more about GPT-4 and why it's so powerful. It's not in the add-on right now, but GPT-4 has the ability to understand images. So you could give it an image of someone, for instance, dropping a teacup, and then you can ask GPT-4 what will happen to the teacup, and it will probably say the teacup will break or it will fall on the floor or anything like that. That might sound cool, but not useful, but think about what that actually means. It means that in the context of Blender, you could give it screenshots of whatever you're doing. Let's say you're making this ginormous geometry notes tree and you don't know what's going on. Uh, you could just send a screenshot to GPT-4 and it will just explain it for you. Or you could send a screenshot of your model and ask GPT-4 if there are any topology issues. So yeah, that is definitely going to be the next thing that's going to change the landscape of Blender and AI. Of course, when we're able to do that, I will cover it so you can all see what the capabilities really are. In the meantime, if you're interested in more GPT-X Blender solutions, just watch my other videos. They should be on screen now. Uh, and if you like this video, let me know by leaving a comment down below or leaving a like. It actually does help out the video in the algorithm. And yeah, it's just a free and easy way to support these kinds of videos. Anyways, I'll see you in the next ones. Simulation notes tutorials are coming up. Stay tuned for that and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.